Hey folks, what your agent does behind the scenes may cost you. I'll talk about that and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for week ending December the 6th, 2023. Many of you recently subscribed. Thank you for that. For those of you that have not yet subscribed, but you really enjoy the content, consider subscribing and hit the bell button so you're reminded when these videos come up. So agents, there's all sorts of different types of realtors out there, but let's label it to great and not so great. There are many great agents out there and many, probably many more and not so great. What's the difference? Now, we can see what they do. If you're a, a buyer or a seller of the general public, you could kind of see what they do. But it's what they do behind the scenes that often separates a great agent from a not so great agent. And let me share a personal experience I had helping a, a buyer client buy a house. Recently, we purchased a property. Now this property was in a neighborhood that it's very competitive. Not too many properties come up for sale. And if a home does come up for sale, that is at least priced reasonably in a matter of a few days, it's sold. That's this type of neighborhood. And sure enough, that's the neighborhood my buyer client wanted to buy in. A home came up. We saw it the second day. And the third day, we put an offer in. Now, in those three days, they had about 15 to 20 showings. It was fairly active. And, and in putting in our offer, I did tell my buyer client, we should probably be prepared that we're going to be competing with some other offers. It, it was just very typical of a home in that neighborhood. Plus, I could see online they had a ton of other showings. It was priced fairly reasonable. I, I just wanted to manage my client's expectations so they weren't surprised. And so, you know, the fact is that I got to say, guys, we're putting in an offer, but there's a chance that someone else is also going to be putting in an offer. Now, there's certain strategies in, in putting in offers. One of them is called, you, you might have heard it before, it's called registering the offer. So when I submit an offer, I would register it. I could either do it online or call the office, uh, the listing brokerage office and say, here's my offer. Now, when an offer is registered, it triggers anybody else who has shown the property that they all get a message, an email saying, hey, an offer has been registered. Now this triggers anyone else who's kind of on the fence thinking about putting in an offer to quickly jump on board or at the very least call the listing agent and say, Hey, I see that you got an offer. We're thinking of putting an offer. When are you going to be reviewing this offer? How much time do I have to submit an offer also? The problem is, is that it's not mandatory to register an offer. So strategically, as, a, as an agent working with a buyer, I have a choice if I want to register or not. It's not mandatory. And same with the listing agent. They have a choice whether they want to register the offer or not. Now, usually, strategically speaking, it's usually in the best interest of the seller to register the offer. In this case, me believing there was going to be lots of competition, I chose not to register the offer. I kind of sent it to the listing agent, in a sense, kind of trying to sneak my offer in on the down low so it wouldn't be broadcast to the universe. Now, when the agent receives this offer, they could on their own, and in most cases, many cases, they'll register the offer if I, as the buyer agent, do not. I know I'm talking a lot about registering the offer, but it's a very crucial part of doing the right thing for the seller, also for the buyer. Now, I've been many times on the listing side where my property, my listing is very active and an agent will put in an offer, 
and they're registering and right away everybody gets notified. And I'm thinking, I'm surprised they registered. I was gonna register it anyways, but I'm surprised that the buyer's agent registered, letting everybody else know that they have an offer. But that's another story. So I put my offer in, I didn't register it. And the listing agent didn't register the offer, letting everybody know. The listing agent called me, we discussed the offer, they sent us a counter offer, and we accepted the counter offer. After three days, in a very popular neighborhood, my client bought a property that we've been looking at for months to try to find him a property in this neighborhood. But I know, and I'm telling this story because the listing agent, I know, left, I, I, I just know it left the money on the table for the seller. The way things worked out, phenomenal for me and my buyer, but not so great for the seller in a sense. Yes, the seller got the sale, but I, 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 I'm, I'm convinced they could have got more money if the agent would have just done that extra step and register the offer. But it's not mandatory, so they chose not to. Or they were too lazy to register the offer because it was an extra step. You know, the fact that it's not mandatory, it's just one of those rules in real estate that, I guess, confuse things uh, for a lot of people there. Because many agents will think it is mandatory. And many sellers don't even know this whole registering an offer is even a thing. But that's what happened in that scenario. That agent didn't register the offer. Nobody got notified. The next step would be to be phoning everybody that showed the property to say, hey, we got an offer. And, and most agents are not going to do that. Ideally, you register and make the phone call and say, hey, any interest. And then there's the follow up call. So what happens behind the scenes is really the difference between a great agent and a not so great agent. What they do that you don't see that in the end helps you whether you're a seller, whether you're a buyer. That's what separates a great agent from a not so great agent. And as always, who you hire matters, not just in real estate, in every industry, but we're talking real estate here. So who you hire matters. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. If you feel this video can help somebody you know, pass it along. And if you wanna speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Up here, there's a link to my calendar. In the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's see what's happening with the Toronto numbers. Folks, are sellers giving up? Well, I'm gonna illustrate, talk a little bit more about that when we get to one of our slides. Let's get started. Here's a quick summary. Condos, semis and towns, detached properties, these are average sold prices for three months, broken down by week. It looks like semis and towns cost almost as much as a detached property now. Relax though, it's not quite like that. Let's get started with detached properties. We're looking at only for the city of Toronto, detached properties broken down by week. This chart is for a whole year. 104 detached properties were sold for week ending December the 6th. Yes, we're in December already. This year has flown by, hasn't it? Week ending December 6th, 104 was sold. 104 is actually not that bad. When you kind of look at the year and look back a little bit, last year at this time, we sold 93, then 63, then 57, and 104 was what we were doing in February when prices were going up. April, you know, there's 121, 29, August. In certain three weeks in August, we were below the 104 mark. So. 104 this time of year just doesn't seem that low. Although historically, it's pretty low. Right now, with the economy and the situation that we're in, it's actually not so bad. 
And although it is coming down, sales are coming down, not that rapidly. 104 were sold, 15 of those sold at $2 million or more. That number, the amount of property selling at $2 million or more, that's come down quite a bit from, well, how far do we gotta go? We gotta go all the way back to September. We had a September 6th, which was Labor Day weekend. That's when we had less than that. But otherwise, we've got 24, 26, 25. The previous week, we were at 24. Week ending December, 5th, December 6th, only 15 sold at $2 million or more. And if we backtrack that, average sold price plummeted one week to the next. We're now sitting at 1,445,000. And for sure, the amount of property selling at $2 million or more hugely affected the average sold price, but it's come way down. Compared to last year, 1,445,000 is 7% lower than what the average sold price was a year ago. The median price is even Steven to what it was a year ago. Median price is 1,190,000. The dotted line, that's a four week moving average. It's pretty clear, it's trending down. I've got three months on the board here, but it's been trending down longer than that. So overall, prices for detached properties in the city of Toronto have been trending down. Sales, well, 32% have sold at list price or more. So it's somewhat competitive nothing like we used to see when we were in the 50s or higher so just under a third selling at list price or more compared to last year if we look at sales overall of detached properties year to date so january 1st to december 6th we have 10 percent fewer sales this year than last year if we compare to the year before 2021 which was our record year we have 39 percent fewer sales this year versus 2021. Listings, very clearly listings are trending down. Fewer and fewer properties are coming onto the market. Active listings coming down rapidly. So let's talk about this a little bit. If we look at the previous week, if we look at the numbers, Active listings for the previous week, week ending November 29th, active listing was 1,583. 1, that's how the week ended. The minute later, that's how the week started with 1,583 detached properties available for sale across the city of Toronto. During the course of the week, we listed 149. 1583 plus 149. I'm going to go back. We know over the course of the week, 104 sold. So 104 sold out of 1583 plus 149. That percentage is 6%. Only 6% of all properties that were available for sale actually sold. 6%. Six out of a hundred properties for sale. So if you were a buyer and you went out to see a hundred properties over the course of the week, only six of those sold. That's not a very active market, is it? Six out of a hundred. Well, let's look at another part of that equation. If we take 1583 plus 149, and we subtract 104 of the which sold, that's really how many active listings should be there now, but it's not. It's far lower. Active listings for week ending December 6th is far lower. It's sitting at 1,486. So what happened? Where'd all the sellers go? Well, lots of them, their listings expired or terminated, meaning the sellers decided that's it, forget it, I'm not getting my price, I'm coming off the market. And that's what a lot of them are doing. And that number, the amount of sellers coming off the market is 8% of all properties that were available for sale. 
So more sellers are choosing not to sell than are actually selling. Eight out of 100 properties came off the market as unsold and six out of 100 actually sold. That's why we're suggesting lots of sellers are choosing not to sell and actually coming off as unsold. The numbers are there. Months of inventory for Toronto detached properties. Although it's down from the previous week, overall it's been climbing steadily. It's now sitting at 3.3 months of inventory. Average days on market is one of the higher days that we've seen is now sitting at 26 as the average days on market. Let's break Toronto down into nine sections. 3.3 is the months of inventory for all of Toronto, which on its own is, it's just kind of borderline of being a balanced market. However, there's some areas, Scarborough, 2.4 months of inventory, same as it was the previous week. East York, Riverdale, Beaches, two months of inventory, far more competitive than Toronto as a whole. Two months of inventory is the same as it was the previous week. In East York, actually half of the properties, 50% are selling at list price or more. Rexdale, Downsview, 1.7 months of inventory. There's some areas in Toronto far more competitive than other areas. Be careful about where you're shopping. I'm not telling you to pick one versus another area, but if you are looking in different neighborhoods, you do need different strategies if you're looking to buy, also if you're looking to sell. Here are semi-detached, 29 semis sold. Six of those were at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price climbed up a bit to 1,249,000. So the detached plummeted this one week. I don't think it's gonna stay that low and we're gonna kind of average out to a, a more of a uh, uh, more of a gradual decline for the detached, but semi jumped up, but it's only 29 sales. So you kind of got to look at that and think, mm, is that, you know, a realistic average number? Compared to last year, one, two, four, nine is 12% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is 17% higher than where we were this time a year ago. But if you look at the dotted line, the four week moving average, prices for semis overall are trending down. Months of inventory hasn't changed that much over the span of three months. Sure, we got weeks that it's a little higher, a little lower, but more often than not, over the last three months, around 2.3, 2.4, 2.2 is really where months of inventory has stayed for semis. And for week ending December 6th, we're sitting at 2.3 months of inventory. The demand for semis is there, and it's usually because of the price point. Here's townhouses. Only 10, 10 freehold townhouses were sold. I circled this because four sold at $1.5 million or more. That's a huge amount of all the townhouses that sold. Guess what happens to average sold price when that happens. It shot way up there to 1427. I want to kind of fly through this real quickly because those numbers are just nuts. 1427 happens to be 28% higher than last year's average sold price for the same week. The median price also way up there at 1330, which is 24% higher than what it was a year ago. And months of inventory sitting at 3.6 months of inventory. Let's talk about condos. Sales gradually trending down. 150 condos were sold. 12 of those were at $1 million or more. And that number's coming down a little bit. Average sold price came way down from the previous week to 675,000. Overall, price has been trending down. Compared to last year, 675 is 8% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. Now, on the board here, I've got three months broken down by week, and I circled the weeks that were negative, lower than last year's average sold price. By far, overall, 
Most weeks, condos are lower than last year's average sold price. Prices are way down from where we were this time last year. The median price is 3% lower than the same week a year ago, trending down. Not aggressively, but median price, average price for condo apartments is trending down. Sales, 150 were sold. Only 21% sold at list price or more. Compared to last year, we have 12% fewer sales year to date. Compared to the previous year, we have 43% fewer sales, fewer condo sales. That's a huge, huge drop in, in activity and volume over the span of two years. Listings way down, 361 listings, but they're coming down aggressively. Active listings coming way down. Months of inventory, look, it came down from the previous week, but still really high, sitting at six months of inventory. What that means is, just think about this for a second. If we continue to buy at the current rate that we're buying now, condos only we're talking about, no more get listed. Just with the exact amount of available condos we have on the market now, it'll take six months to buy all the condos currently available for sale. That's a long time. Here's a summary. Three to five months, we say that that's a balanced market. Above five months is more of a buyer's market. Well, pretty clearly, condos are in a buyer's market. Now, there's going to be some buildings, you're not going to experience that. It's, it's going to be a seller's market in some buildings. There's few of them, but they're there. And, and rarely does a condo come up for sale in that building. And when it does, it gets bought up quickly. There are few of them. Overall, generally speaking, in the city of Toronto, lots of condos available for sale. And generally speaking, it's a buyer's market for condos. The other market, the freehold market for detached semis and towns, overall more of a balanced market. Although in some neighborhoods that have lost the list, have lots of listings, it, it could feel like a buyer's market. But overall, it's a balanced market. And then you get some of those other areas that I talked about, Scarborough, uh, East York, it's, it's a bit more competitive. It's still going to feel, in many cases, a seller's market. Although prices are way lower than what they've been, if your home is set up properly and priced properly, buyers are still ready to buy. And we can see with the low months of inventory, buyers are buying quickly. As I said at the very, very beginning, who you hire matters. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.